Hey guys, welcome back to BJ Tech News. This is Bernardo and this is episode 136. So, what's today's episode about? Today's episode is about Exchange, that dreadful server that us technology guys have to maintain to keep the business up and running. Believe it or not, Exchange, which is emailing services, are very, very, very important in any organization. It doesn't matter what kind of organization you're coming from. Mailing, email is very important. Now, if you're a lucky person, you basically have like Google business apps and you're letting Gmail or Google deal with your emailing services and you don't have to deal with any server. Good for you. But believe it or not, uh, Microsoft came out with Exchange 2013. Yes, 2013. It's crazy. You know, they went to Exchange 2000, 2003, 2007, 2010, and now 2013. So I'm going to show you guys the um, the prerequisite that you need to get up and running with Exchange 2013. Now, this video, I'm not going to actually show you how to install 2013. I'm just showing you how to uh, prep your machine to get your machine ready for installing Exchange 2013. Now, I'm actually doing it on a Windows Server 2012 machine. The reason why I'm, down, I'm doing it on a Windows Server uh, 2012 machine is because that's the latest OS for Windows and uh, servers. So why not do it on that? So the first thing that you want to do is you got to make sure that the Windows Server 2012 should be at least uh, should be at least an RTM and it should not be a pre-release now if you want to check uh, where you guys what version you guys you go to the run and I got a little cheat sheet right here with all of my commands and you can actually run a a win VR and as you can see right here it tells you the build now if the build number should be at least 9200 if it's greater than that which I probably won't uh, you're good to go now also got to make sure that your forest level should be at least a Windows Server 2003 now to see your forest functional level uh, you gotta go into your active directory domain and trust action and release the forest level so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna basically show you guys what I mean you're gonna go into here I actually installed Active Directory service into my uh, Windows Server 2012 machine uh, the only reason why because I just don't have a lot of resources to build uh, its own virtual machine so I said to myself why not have this stuff in one shot so let me see let me see and I need to go into active director drain domains and trust there we go it's the one we want and what you want to do from here you want to go to action and from action go to raise functional race force functional level and as you can see my current Forest function level is Windows Server 2012, so I am good to go. Now, if you guys are running a, if you're running your Active Directory on a Server 2008 or a Server 2003, you got to make sure that your functional level should be at least Server 2003 for this to work. Okay. Now, the domain controller that is holding the schema master row in your domain needs to be at least server 2003 sp2 now for me because i'm running everything on a standalone server which is a big no-no it's a big big no-no this is the command that you can actually find out on the, the level on your network what's holding the schema master and what level it has so i'm going to copy this guy right here and i'm going to open up my PowerShell and I'm gonna paste that and hit enter as you can see my schema master my domain name naming master my PDC uh, my RDI my RDI pool manager my infrastructure master is all pointing into this BJ dash exchange 12 server again I'm running my DNS and my domain controller in one box okay this is only for testing purposes but in best practices the domain controller is in its own separate server now 
Next thing that you want to do is, again, as you oh, should never close that. Duh. Also, make sure this is really common sense. Make sure that your exchange server is part of a domain. You got to make sure it's part of a domain. So I'm going to open this up again because uh, I need the PowerShell pretty soon. Because believe it or not, uh, Windows Server 2012 is based on command prompt. I don't want to use the GUI as much, even though I installed the GUI version of it. I want to show you guys how to install everything on PowerShell because PowerShell is key with Server 2012. Now, also, this is something that I really didn't do, but I always push this out. I always tell you guys to always do this. Now, you got to make sure you run all your Windows updates and have your server fully updated with every security or critical update that's out there for your server. Make sure it's up to date, okay? For me, I didn't want to waste some time, so I did not do that. Cool? Cool. Now, uh, I want to show you a key thing about server 2012 one of the key elements that you really need that it that normally we do it on 2008 and 2003 is you need to have a the latest and greatest dot net uh, dot net framework now on Windows Server 2012 they already pre-installed the dot net framework already for you guys so I'm gonna show you right here quick and as you can see oops features as you can see .NET Framework 4.5 features already installed that's already automatically done for you okay I'm gonna cancel this now the exchange 2013 server needs to have the AD active directory domain services administration tools installed now to simply do that I'm gonna show you guys how to do that on command prompt again this is my little cheat sheet right here I want to type this stuff out and if you guys need these commands hey let me know I will shoot this stuff out to you so I'm gonna do a paste and hit enter and it's collecting and there you go now as you notice uh, the server uh, as you notice my domain controller is indicating um, that the the tools are already installed that's why I'm getting the no change install the problem the reason for that is because again I have the Active Directory stuff already installed on this machine. If it was another machine, most likely you're going to have your Exchange server have these tools installed. Got it? Now, there's two parts of this. Now, you can either install the client access server roles only, or you could do the mailbox server, which will also have the client access server roles as well. Now, I'm going to basically give you guys uh the commands to have your exchange server have the mailbox server with the client access server requirements now to do that is this little long powershell command right here this little right this one right here is basically only for client access server these are the roles that you need to get your client access server role now I'm, I'm, this is my testing machine, so I'm going to have everything one box. I'm going to have my mailbox server, and as well as my client access server, my DNS, my DHCP, my Active Directory, all in one box. That is a big no-no, but for what I'm doing right here, is just my testing lab, but for production-wise, don't do that, guys. Okay, so these are the commands that I'm going to do. Again, if you guys need uh, this to play around with, hey, shoot me an email, and I will send you the... I will send you a text file or I will shoot you an email with all the commands that you guys can get yourself up and running. Now, once the stuff is done, right? Once this once the stuff is completed, most likely I have to do a reboot, okay? Once I do a reboot, I need to uh Get a copy of the Unified Communications Manage API 4.0 runtime exe file. Okay, I will put this link at the very bottom of this video. You guys need a copy of that. You also need a copy of the Microsoft Office 2010 filter pack. Now, I'm going to be downloading the 64 bit because this machine, my Windows Server 2012, is a 64 bit architecture. So, I'm, a, I'm I downloaded the 64 bit stuff. Okay. 
And the last thing that you need to download is the Service Pack 1 for Microsoft Office Filter Pack 2010. Okay, KB24641, 64 bit condition. Remember, this is for 64 bit. And I, I believe um, Server 2012 only comes with 64 bit. So you don't really have to worry about the 32 bit. Download that. Now, uh, the way that you can install it is once you do the reboot, install this, install this, and then install this in that order. Okay? Because most likely I have to reboot. I gotta reboot pretty soon. And once I do that reboot, I'm gonna start the installation. And once I do the once I do the installation, that's about it. You're good to go. And those are the prerequisites that you need to get your machine up and running before you start the uh, Exchange 2012 installation. And as you can see, I'm done. So I'm gonna actually do a control alt delete. And I'm gonna do a restart. And it's actually uh, yeah, why not? Okay. Uh once I finish the restart, I think the operating system boots real fast. So once it's done, I already pre-downloaded all the files, all the exe files, and I'm gonna start installing the stuff in the order that I told you guys that I'm gonna have it. And uh, again, if you guys do not remember in what order, the order was basically install your Microsoft Unified Communication Manage API 4.0 Core Runtime 64-bit first. Second thing that you want to do is your Microsoft Office 2010 Filter Pack 6.64-bit. Uh, and the last thing that you want to download and install is your Microsoft Office 2010 Filter Pack SP1 64-bit. In that order, and that's about it. Hopefully, in future videos, I should have. Um, a future video on showing you how to install 2013 and how it looks and how it feels. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and I catch you guys later. Thanks.